Using the GPT features not only allows us to integrate external code and data into our API calls, but it also enables us to enhance the conversational capabilities. So let's look on how we can achieve this. A repository for all the code in this tutorial is available to channel members. You can find this on the members channel tab on YouTube. So for this example, we're gonna be creating a recommendations function that allows the user to give us a budget and what type of computer they want. And we're going to pass ChatGPT specific components that we would like it to provide information on. And it will may also give us further components as well. So to start off with, let's initialize a new project. So let's run npm init dash y. And this will create a new project for us. And we can see that by seeing the package.json file that it's created. So from here, we need to install two components. The first one is OpenAI and the second one is .env. To do this, we run npm i openai and .env. So once they're installed, we can open up the package.json file and see that under dependencies, we do have .env and OpenAI. So let's start off by creating that .env file. And this is where we're gonna store our API key. To get your API key, you go to OpenAI and you click on the API keys on the left-hand side under the platform.openai.com and you'll be provided with a list of API keys. If you haven't got any, you can click create a new secret key, give it a name and it will give you a new key. I've got one here called functions, which is what we'll be using today. So we'll be using a key of openai underscore API underscore key and then we put equals and then the API key that's provided. So we click save and that's everything we're doing with that file. Up next, we're going to create an index.js file, and this is where all of the functions are going to sit. So once you've created that file, we can start importing the packages that we installed. So we run const and then open AI is equal to require and then open AI. Then we need to import the .env to do this. We say require and then .env. And then we say dot config to import the config of the env from the root directory. Now we can initialize the OpenAI constructor. To do this, we say const OpenAI is equal to new OpenAI. And we pass in the API key that we created inside the dot env file. Once we've done that, we can start writing the actual function for this recommended components. So I'll create a function called recommended components. And that's going to pass in two parameters. We're going to have a purpose and a budget. First thing we want to do is create a object of objects. So this is something that we can loop over for OpenAI to pass the correct information through. So I'm going to create a constant called recommendations. And that's going to be equal to an object with an object of gaming inside. This will be for the gaming PC. We'll have multiple versions. We'll have a low end. We'll have a mid range, which I'll call medium. We'll also have a high end as well. So inside of this array here is where we're gonna start passing the components for the computer. So for the low end, we'll say we have an AMD Ryzen 5. For the CPU and for the GPU, we'll have a GTX 1650 and that will come with eight gigabytes of RAM. For the medium range, we'll have an Intel Core i5 and that will have an RTX 3060. and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And for the high end, we'll just have an Intel Core i7, RTX 4090, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then we do the same for the video editing machine and general use machine. And you can add as many here as you want. I'm just gonna put copy and paste in the data. So here you can see the recommendations. We have gaming, video editing, and general use. And inside here, we have the low, medium, and high for each of these. 
and the specs obviously are different because of the different things you'll be doing with those machines. So with that done, we now need to return the components list back to OpenAI. And to do this, we say let components is going to be equal to recommendations. And then we're going to pass in the purposes. So for example, if the purpose was gaming, it would now look at this one here. And then the budget, we're going to say we have a medium budget, for example, on this one. So it will pass back this array here. We need to check if they actually exist. So we say if there's not any components, then what we can do is we can return a json.stringify. And we're just going to return an error message. So error. And we can say components not found for this budget or purpose. And if it does exist, we obviously want to return those components, the purpose and the budget over to OpenAI. So let's say return json.stringify. And we're going to pass in the purpose, the budget, and the components. I'm going to have this called recommended components. And that's everything we need to do actually for this function. The reason I've called this something slightly different is so that we don't accidentally call it the same as the actual function that we're using further down the line. It's easier to read and it's easier to debug. So now we get into the nitty gritty of it. This is going to be the function that we're going to run the conversation through. So to do that, we're going to create a new function. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. I'm going to say run conversation. So let's now initialize a messages array. Inside of here, we're going to create the initial one, which is going to have a role of user. Now this normally, we wouldn't be doing this, but this is only for testing purposes. This will normally be the message from the user. So we're going to say, uh, what components should I get for a gaming PC on a let's say low budget. This will be the initial one that we send through to OpenAI. As I said, this would be normally dynamic. So this is a content that's actually gonna come from the user, but for testing purposes, we're just gonna inject this data in. So from here, we need to create the tools that we're gonna be passing through to OpenAI. This is things like telling that it's a function, what function that it needs to run, and any particular data that we need to pass through, for example, the purpose and the budget. So let's create a constant called tools. And that's going to be an array and it's going to have an object inside with a type of function and then we can pass the function data through and then we give it a name the name will be the recommended components that we passed through up here we give it a description so recommended components for a pc build and then we just need to start passing those parameters in so this will be a type of object. And then we're going to pass those properties in. So the properties are going to have a purpose, which is going to be a type of string description, the purpose of this PC. We're also going to pass an enum into here. And this enum will have the same values that we gave inside of our recommendations here. So these top level ones. And then the same for the budget. Let's add an enum in here. And that will be then for the second level here. So the low, medium and high. So from there, we're just going to tell the tools that the required fields are the purpose and the budget. Once we've done that, we can make our first communication with OpenAI. So to do this, we say const response is going to be equal to await openai.com chat.completions.create and that's going to take in a model and the model that we're going to want to use for this let's go into the documentations go to models gpt4 and we use a new turbo model it's in preview but we use that for this then we can pass through the messages so that will be the messages array that we created 
the tools that we just created a second ago. And then we need to select the tool choice. So the tool choice we're gonna have here is going to be auto. And now we can get the message that's passed back from ChatGPT. So let's say const response message is equal to response dot choices. We'll take the first instance and then dot message. So the difference between this and the normal chat GPT calls is this now passes back a tool calls, uh, which we'll be using. It's actually an array of different tool calls uh, that references our function that we've created. And we'll need to loop through that in a second. So let's just check first that that exists. So let's say if the response message dot tool underscore calls. So if that exists, we want to then tell it our available functions, and then we want to push that new message into the array and then loop through those two, those tool calls to get the function data and the function names. We we'll go through that in a second. So let's say the const available functions is equal to, and that's an object. And we're going to pass in the recommended components, which will then reference our recommended components array above. And then let's push that message that we received. So this message response here, let's push that into our messages. So messages dot push, and then we pass that into there. So with that done, we can now loop through these tool calls. So we say for const tool underscore call of tool calls. That's my bad. We actually need the response message dot tool calls. So from here, we're actually going to build up a new message to pass back to OpenAI that contains all of the function information. So first of all, we need to get the function name. So we say const function name. And that's going to be equal to tool call. I'm just going to change this to that. Tool call dot function dot name. And then we need to tell it the function it's going to be calling. So we say const function to call is equal to the available functions. And then we pass that function name into there. And then we can get the function arguments. So that would be the arguments that are returned from the tool call. So function args is equal to JSON dot pass. Then we say tool call dot function dot arguments. And then we need to actually create the function response from the function that we've created at the top here. So we say const function response is equal to function to call inside of here we're going to pass the parameters of function arg dot purpose and then function args dot budget and that's actually the information that we need to build up the next message to push into the list of messages so we say message dot push and then inside of here we need to create an object we say tool underscore call underscore id and that would be equal to the tool call dot id and the role that we want to give this is tool so that's different from anything we've done in the past and then the name will be the function name that we have above here and then the content will be the function response So we're actually getting close to finishing this now. So outside of that for loop, we need to now create the second response to open AI. So I'm just going to copy the first response and edit it slightly. So I'm just going to call this second response. And that's just going to take in the model and the messages. And then from here, we can return the second response dot choices. So that's actually everything we need to do now. So this should create the conversation for us and also pass in any information that we require to be custom. 
So to run this, we say run conversation, and that's going to return a promise. So we say dot then. And inside of here, we're just going to console log. So it console logs out the information that's been returned. And then we're just going to catch any errors if they do happen. And we'll do that with a console error. So if we click save, let's just have a quick look through here, make sure nothing's out of. So I missed a const here. Why are you white? So I missed an N there. It's always good just to check through, otherwise we will get the errors. It's best not just to get the errors though. So that looks like it's done. Let's now run this. So in the terminal, we can run node and then dot. I get function args. I didn't save the file. Let's rerun that again. So as we can see, we have a response here. So let's scroll up and see what we have. So the assistant building a gaming PC on a low budget can be balanced out between performance and costs. And then we have our list of components here. So we have a AMD Ryzen 5. So if we go up to our list here, we have a gaming PC on a low budget of an AMD Ryzen 5. It's actually given us the 3600 model there. The GTX 1650, so NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 and eight gigabytes of RAM. And it's given us a little explanation of what each of them are. But on top of that, it's also given us some extra information, motherboard, storage, power supply, and so on. So in this example, we created a components recommendation system. You can take this further if you like by adding more information or by extending the function call. So rather than only going too deep on the purpose and the budget, you could add more information Let's say, for example, whether they want it to be purely AMD or purely Intel. So you could take it a lot further if you wanted. I'd be really interested to find out what you're looking to create with these functions. So leave a comment in the comment section. All of this code is available to the members under the members tab on YouTube. If you found this video useful, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.